Well, given the fact that we decided not to interrupt each other, we share one microphone, so only one of us can, can talk. Um, yesterday, I was faced with a question, okay, we know that there's everything in crisis, everything is complicated, but what actually, what is it that we can do? Now, I can reassure you, we also don't know. Um, and given the other the talks that we have seen, there is a disparity. Either you talk theoretically about what's going on and you're getting into that kind of idea of explanation, but then very often you get stuck there. Or you go down to the basics and you try to give an example of what has been done, what could be done, but that doesn't scale. It also doesn't work. So we're also facing that kind of, how, how to say, that kind of mismatch, and I'm, I'm afraid we're also not going to overcome it, but we try, we try our best. Um, now, we just have one slide with the minutes marked, and there's always one, already one minute passed, so... Uh, Ralf, you explain the mobile and uh, immobile factors. Okay, we, we start, we try to start with a very, very big game. That's um, how modern economists, uh, usually neoliberal um, church, uh, I want to say, uh, how they describe production. They take uh, different production factors and uh, their uh, important dis uh, distinction is uh, mobile production factors versus immobile production factors. The mobile pro production factor is obviously capital, um, money, because it has the ability to shift economic uh, efforts uh, er, uh, across borders, so-called uh, so foreign direct investment, or uh, uh, terms like this. And the immobile factors, there are lots. Uh, it's, um, but most, most, uh, the most important immobile factor is labor. And um, so, in, in that way, um, modern uh, neoliberal econom economists arrive at a distinction which has been made by Karl Marx some 150 years ago. But they ascribe um, different, um, different um, identities on, on that. The capital uh, is uh, ascribed uh, the mobility, so uh, the capital can choose between rule sets. It chooses the rule sets and the environment which uh, fits the capital best. The, the immobile factors, the, the workers, they cannot choose between rule sets uh, usually. They have to stick with the rule set where they are. So this leaves governments in a very uncomfortable position. They have to slash down the, the social uh, rights, they have to slash down wages for, to attract capital. Because without that, they, uh, they uh, get no e economic... Uh, 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 no economic progress or no economic gains. Well, one could of course ask, we, could of, co we of course ask ourselves, how come that that situation changed in this way, that the states were disempowered in that way? And our solution for now has been, well, with the growth of technical media, with the growth of, with the growth of media of uh, information exchange, of course you have an asymmetry. You easily exchange information and you uh, exchange uh, compared to the exchange of material. So that's that's the very simple ground for that. So I step to the next point, which is the question of political agency, because there's one there's a very simple anecdote or very simple fact that happened within the the, the the banking crisis when the banks claimed at some point, well, we are too big to fail. That is a claim that calls for the state of exception. And that says basically, this, it's not the state anymore that can call for that state, but it's the banks. And, from, and at that point, we had the transition of sovereignty from the state to the banks. That means, on the other hand, we cannot, we, or we might not be able to rely to the state of, as the, as the ultimate, ultimate um, institution of political agency. But one has to create a political agencies that are on level with the, with the forces that they fight against. Okay. But... Uh if we create um, a movement which is able to uh, fight on the global level, 
who who can uh, who can we demand? Uh, there there is no government. There there is isn't even a rule set. There there uh, we we cannot um, ask for uh, go to the uh, United Nations and ask for uh, workers' rights. They are not uh, in in charge of any workers' rights. So we have only one um, structure to appeal to. That's uh, that our we ourselves. We we have to construct. Um, in, in a way to, to act in this system, in a way to, to be able to act in this uh, globalized economy, we have to construct um, uh, a, a global structure of actors and we can only demand ourselves to, uh, to change the world. We cannot uh, uh, demand anyone else. There's one point to compare to it. That has not been uh, that has not happened the first time in history. If you look back into the history of revolutions or kind of let's say revolutionary movements, you always have the result that the you always have the the, the fact that the result of the re revolution in some way emulates the the power structure that was there before. As much as Christianity was emulating the Roman Empire, or let's say. The French Revolution was em was emulating the French state with its different levels. In the end, as much as Marxism, or he always corrects me when I say Marxism, went because there's we 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 are not we are we not we are not have this we don't have the same opinion on every topic. So on that topic, we have a different opinion. But um, you want to explain it, yeah. Marx? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, what what happened with a uh, with a Bolshevik revolution in the uh, Soviet Union? They started with a with a system of uh, um, mon monarchist feudal system, and uh, despite all efforts to to uh, get to a um, real democracy, they they stuck with a with a, a very feudal system, which uh, with uh, some. Uh, Optimism one could describe as an as an absolute monarchy with a with an um, intellectual uh, effort to to uh, scientific um, progress, and uh, they they stuck with it because of the the society um, the the rule set of the society you cannot change by organizing an an, an outside factor you are inside society. So if if we have uh, is some other constraint of uh, on on that what what we can demand from the, um, from a, a progressive movement is um, that um, in the end we have to emulate uh, a structure which is as efficient in um, um, in regulating a very complex society as uh, nowadays the banking system is on a on a um on a not not an in that that uh, old fashioned communist way of uh, top down um, approach and also not in a way that one should l appeal to the state legislation but that one has to build a corporate uh, not a cor not a non corporate but one has to build a political agency that acts on the level of the the World Wide Web, on the very same level that the financial industry is acting. There's no, uh, to, looking at the history of revolutions, there's no alternative to that. Now, that was more or less the idea of uh, who, uh, who, who could we be that we are to demands, that we demand something. Uh, but what could be the demands? What actually could be that one, that one, that one wants from the economy? Uh, there's one striking fact, and d despite all the, the, especially the video talk that was trying to frame our situation as as, as positive as could be, um, the striking fact was pointed out that the inequalities are rising, and that there is something uh, deeply wrong within that system, a system that basically serves to, how to say, disproportionately distribute the incomes. The basic question then is, how could we think of a system that actually f tackles the very simple, and, and not, it's, not, it's, not, it's actually not very simple, the very complex task of distributing jobs or work and goods in a way that is more fair. And there's, so to say, different levels on which to tackle that uh, 
that question. And one is the, so to say, a basic condition that we cannot go without. That would be the, the now the, our, our watch is over, forget it. Um, <laughs> the clock is over, we're going to make. The, the, the very basic conditions that we all have to ask for is the infrastructure. Yes, it's a kind of a binding constraint. Um, we are um, lots of lots of people, and without uh, this public or any anyway or organized infrastructure, we cannot live. We we are we are dependent on this, and it absorbs also um, lots of work. And uh, if I um, interpret uh, the, the, the talk before um, rightly, um, I, I would suggest we are on the um, on on a on a way that the government very loosely interpreted um, can provide a lot of work in just in um, maintaining the the infrastructure, which is. All across the Western world, it's um, uh, it's in process of disintegrating because they they favor new investment over maintaining uh, infrastructure. And uh, however we we formulate our political um, demands, it uh, must be clear that there is uh, there is no uh, kind of uh, pol pot uh, approach uh, to get the people out in the land and and uh, uh, working in the fields but it's uh, the the first order imperative is to uh, maintain and even um, um, grow the infrastructure which is uh, which is uh, the the basic uh, where we live on other ideas and going beyond that Cast, a, cast more, so to say, sub substantial, not substantial, but more basic, more basic, basic things into question amongst them money. So money was introduced, um, was introduced, money popped up as a state medium, but it served to facilitate, facilitate the trade between people that did not know each other. Money was transcending the communities. So mm, all the trade among strangers uh, would not have been possible without money. Now, given the fact that social networks create an environment in which we're not essentially strangers to each other, but friends or friends of friends, one could ask from that theoretical viewpoint, is it possible that there's different systems within, one could think of diff different systems within these networks for the exchange of goods and jobs, for the exchange of goods and tasks. Now we've seen that video lecture that says, okay, basically, of course, networks can facilitate that exchange, but they all run, they all rely in the end on money. And I would say that is the, the, the usual, so to say, first step in the media transition. Whenever we look at, at, at media revolutions, it's like that, that the first, the, 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 in the first phase, the new medium imitates the old medium. Like to say, we try to, we try to map all the transactions and all the, all the, how to say, economy that is now channeled through money within the new medium. But one should then raise the other question to say, right, okay, we can do that in the first step, but would, wouldn't, isn't that, couldn't we think of a second step where we actually keep the transactions going and get rid of that money exchange, of, as, of money as a medium of exchange? And that, I think, is the, is the basic question. Also, given the fact that money for now is one of the key drivers of inequality. Let's put it like that. Is one of the is one of the the, the the key medium that serves a system that creates bigger and bigger inequalities. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. I think that was, that was all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't do it. It's 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 actually not that we have a that we have a proper solution a solution for that. The only thing that we could do is to point out to uh, to point out the 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 point where to, where to where to look at from where to look at or from which to wait for 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 different ideas popping up. That's all we can do for now. <laughs>